Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting show of The Big Data Show. I'm your host, Nate Latimer, and today we're talking about AI as it is being used in the entertainment industry. So our guest today is Mr. Russell Snipes with Savage Studios. Russ, thank you so much for being here. Tell of us course. about yourself. It's my pleasure, Nate. I'm uh, so excited to be here today. So I'm the owner, producer, and director at Savage Studios. We are a uh, full production company we do everything from pre post and everything in between we also have a locations branch we um we provide locations for film television projects basically any kind of content creation we provide locations across the united states very okay. cool so like what i'm really interested in talking to you about on this show um what's really fascinating to me is you know everything's going on in the ai world right now oh yeah um you know as a big data guy merging it with big tech and you know artificial intelligence it's just fascinating mm -hmm. and the entertainment industry um yeah i really wanted to dive into this so like let's talk about like ai led like creative direction you know like virtual directors like what, what's your what's your point on that so ai is changing every single industry but one of the ones that's affecting very quickly right now is entertainment and they're, they're creating ai programs that are now able to edit videos for us you know and this is happening as we're talking right now now not only they can create and edit videos but they can develop storylines they can write scripts now you're getting into you're replacing people's jobs with create you know with creative things ai can do and i see it going to the point of you you will be be able to create a movie that AI program wrote, mm -hmm. cast, created, filmed, uh, filmed, quote unquote, filmed itself, and will be a full feature product. Sure, you know. Um, but it's wild how quickly this AI is innovating, and I don't know where we're going to be at in six months from now, let alone ten years from now, where, where everything's going. No, I mean I think it's absolutely brilliant. So, well, let's talk about like uh, like personalized content creation. You know, AI bespoke content tailored to individual tastes, you know, like. Yes. So when you combine data and AI, it's a deadly combination in a good way. Now, what AI can do for the entertainment industry is you could cater commercials to someone that, let's say, their favorite kind of dog is a golden retriever and they're, they're pet fanatics, they're animal fanatics. Well, you know what? They're going to start to see AI-generated commercials with golden retrievers in them, and that's going mm -hmm. to win over the hearts of the, all those fans of golden retrievers. That's just how it's going to work. Absolutely. No, and, I mean, like, I mean, I think Netflix does a great job of just serving up. You know, you watched this movie, so you know you're probably going to like this movie. You know, yes. it's just an algorithm, really. But with yeah. the artificial intelligence making that better and better, and improving those algorithms. Is, uh, is pretty fascinating on what the future's gonna hold and that utopia that it's gonna really create of your you know experience and you know just as a viewer yeah without a doubt without a doubt there's no telling where it's going but it where it's you know it's so exciting at the exact same time to see where it is and what its potential is so let's talk about like personalized fan bases you know mm -hmm. like I mean how the AI world is affecting that to you know generate fan bases. Okay, so for example, you know, when they have a full feature movie preparing for release, typically you have one or two teaser trailers, and then there are two to three full length trailers, you know, two to three minutes long. So now what can happen is every single one of those trailers, they can be, they can be created to fit the, the viewer. Now let's say there's an action movie, but it's got a lot of drama to it too. Now, and there's a female that's interested in this drama and they're promoting an action movie, but it's very dramatic. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? AI could cut a trailer or a teaser that would show the dramatic side of the movie to lure her in to be more interested to this Makes quote sense. unquote action movie. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So It really gets into the metadata um, at a demographic level. Exactly. And a preference level. So it's like lifestyle, behavioral attributes. It's all of that tied into what the viewer is going to enjoy and really what's going to get them to watch. Yeah, because typically a viewer might not give that action movie a chance because, oh, it's cars are blowing up, people are shooting guns, but there's a love story behind it. Well, mm -hmm. 
the, you know, somebody that might be intrigued by that love story would be more inclined to watch this movie because that's how the trailer was created by the AI programming. And I could see that probably even follow into like, uh, you know, casting because, you know, do you mm -hmm. want Channing Tatum? Do you want, you know, Tom Cruise? Like, do you like, yes. who, like who do you uh, want cast in that role just based on like screen tests would probably be uh, an interesting use case to find out. I guess really just as a, sort of like a polling and su like surveying almost like who should fit in that role to well, play that character. So now more than ever, we're getting the chance to do fan casting. Um, they are considering people like, for example, Ryan Reynolds is a great example. He shot a con proof of concept for Deadpool, right? Mm -hmm. He shot it probably 10 years before the movie was actually made. He did that proof of concept and then over the years past the fan base just created the following and following and pushing and pushing and pushing and then he was cast mm -hmm. well when you're talking about using ai you can assess that data much more quickly and realize look this is the guy they want right now it's a mock-up test process so it's like you you know you're going to win before you even you know start filming or yep. that's, that's they'll know the guy because the data supports it yeah based on or the it's girl like, it's almost like a voting system that's yeah. pretty cool yeah yeah so yeah. let's talk about like digital actors i mean do we still even need actors i love actors oh. and like i mean i'm a huge fan of acting always have been a huge fan of acting so like, yeah like you know it's uh i know it's going to turn a lot of people off to think that an actor could be reproduced yeah. Uh, because it's the soul, it's the heart of the true human actor, yeah. you know? So what, what's, what's your take on digital actors? I do see us being driven towards a world where actors are created digitally. Mm -hmm. And not only, you know, now they're starting it by enhancing people. You know, there's, they're going to release the new Indiana Jones movie with Harrison Ford de-aged. Mm -hmm. And his, de his de-aging looks fantastic. It looks yeah, it great. Does. Yeah, it does. Um, and I'm excited to see that movie because of that. But now... They've got to the point to where I read an article on Bruce Willis, how he had sold the rights to basically his entire image to one company. Now, this company plans on making movies for Bruce Willis, or not for Bruce Willis, but using Bruce Willis's likeness mm -hmm. at the age of whatever they so choose. Now, they could recreate another Die Hard. They could create a Die Hard at the age where he's 35. It's all digitized, so yeah, that's uh, it's pretty impressive. I, I'm excited to see how, how realistic that looks like, yeah. um, in the near future. And yeah. I say near future, I mean very near future. Um, I mean, you could even bring actors back from the dead, <laughs> you know, like that was my next point because in, a lot of people have talked about uh, the name James Dean keeps coming back in terms of recreating digital people, and he was one of these that died young. And if he would have had a full career, what the things that he could sure. have done, you know, so. I see this turning into, yes, they're going to be bringing back actors that are dead and mm -hmm. have been deceased for a long time now. And it's not only actors, it's musicians, it's performers. You know, they're yeah, even... Man, you got like, I mean, Philip Seymour Hoffman was an amazing actor. Bring him back. Incredible. Heath Ledger. Oh, yes. huge fan of Heath Ledger. Like, so just... It just, I mean, even you can go back to like River Phoenix. You know, oh, they died yeah. so young. You know? Yes. It's amazing. Let's talk about, you know, like post-production. Uh, mm -hmm. Since you guys do everything from pre to production to post-production. Yes. Let's talk about that painful process of oh, post-production and the thousands of hours that that could take and how quickly that's being sped up. And it is costly. It's time-consuming. And, you know, with the advent of AI and where it's going in terms of innovation, post-production process could be sped up to a fraction of where it is today you know you're talking about months of work could be compressed down to weeks days maybe even hours mm -hmm. and, on, and on short form content you're talking about minutes on very short form content you're talking about seconds of, of just mm -hmm. the ai generating an edited piece of uh content that that fits the demographic of viewer that the AI program thinks will receive it man. well. A hundred percent. So, you know, that would lead me into more of a controversial topic. You know, everybody's somewhat scared of AI unless mm -hmm. you're in AI. Yeah. You're a big data, big tech guy like me. Like, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I think yeah, it's just yeah. going to create a better future for us. Yes. So redefining job roles in the entertainment industry. Yes. What do you think that's going to look like? So there are people that are scared of it. And I completely understand that. But I look at it in a different, through a different lens. What I think it'll allow people to do will 
the menial tasks, the tasks that are time consuming and are, you know, that, that are not exciting to do, the AI programs can take care of that. But that gives the humans the ability to focus on the more creative side of things, which that's what we enjoy. We enjoy being creators. Mm -hmm. We enjoy being visionaries. 100%. That's, that's, what our, that's what our passion is. And, and it's what I love about it is it's progressive. It's forward moving. And if mm -hmm. you've got you know AI doing all this heavy lifting, yeah. then we can move even faster and create more, uh, I don't know, just more advanced movies to watch or augmented reality virtual reality even live within and interact with right so yes. are you guys doing anything in, in that particular space yet is that a little too early or like well, that's, I, that's fascinating to me it is fascinating i do have a member of my team that is currently playing and developing augmented reality and he's playing with it in the form of implementing it into movies. Now, of course, it's not going to be to the extent of which it will be in 10 years from now. What it's going to be in 10 years from now are people are going to be able to live in a movie and experience a movie that they are looking forward to seeing. Mm -hmm. You know, they could it could be the next Top Gun and they could be a cadet within that movie and then experience the movie firsthand from the point of view of one of his wingmen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he could be you could live through Iceman's eyes of a Top Gun movie. And it's really interesting to see like how that's going to shape humans in general uh because you know we are based on our life experiences. Yeah. So if you're living, you know, in, you know, a fake life, an augmented life, uh, yeah. virtual reality, uh, it's just gonna be really interesting to see how that shapes people from different walks of life at a socio uh, socioeconomic level. You know, somebody that yeah. you know, came up from uh, hardly anything, nothing, uh, versus somebody that was spoon fed yeah. you know, their whole life. Yeah. And another part of this is I think AI will give people that didn't have the the opportunity to create content, high level content, I think it will close the gap because these multi million dollar studios, some of this content and visual effects can be produced for little to nothing now with the advent of AI, with mm -hmm. the innovation of AI. I think it's gonna close the gap in terms of people that may not have a lot of money can create high quality content that could you know blow an audience away sure and it's and it's just a matter of maneuvering that ai and knowing how to position it how to leverage it and how to utilize it best to create the best possible project a hundred percent so like i mean when you're thinking about augmented reality and you're thinking about you know all the different worlds you could live within mm -hmm. you have an incredible uh you know real world catalog for location scouting right oh like, yeah tell me about that because i know savage studios has a great name for that so it's funny you say this because the the tech i have working on augmented reality the first project that i had him do was uh we were creating literal walkthroughs of our locations that's smart yep so for example, I could send a director a link uh, and have him walk through using a digital device such as an iPad through a room with a camera, and he would be able to walk through and see the dimensions of the room in real time through a camera or through a lens or mm -hmm. through a cell phone. And that was something that I had started developing probably three years ago that I'm still, I'm still tweaking it, still working with this, this tech on it. Mm -hmm. But that's somewhere where I've already and my company started combining these worlds. And we're trying to stay so, right on that edge. Interesting. So the, I guess the size of the catalog, you know, that database of mm -hmm. locations that you have. I mean, are you in like all 50 states? Like, you Oh, know, yeah, which... all 50 states, even Alaska, Hawaii, every, I mean, everything. And now I'm looking at expanding abroad. Interesting. So, yeah. So, like, I mean, how lar large is the catalog right now? Like, what's that database look like? Is oh, it hundreds God. of locations? Is oh, no, it... it's in the thousands. It's in oh, the wow. thousands. Nice. I can't even put a number on it. I have it categorized by like, OK, schools, gas stations uh you know convenience stores and and then you can and within that you can they're indexed by state they're indexed by city they're Perfect. In, indexed so, by every so single it's a searchable database based on whatever they want you yep. know if they want a graveyard you got graveyards if they want a hospital you got hospitals yep. if, if they exactly. want to shoot team wolf out of high school you got all that so it's all 
index and catalog that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So you digitize all those locations, and then that creates and parlays into the augmented reality too of the future. So you already got a head start. Well, that's pretty smart. That's Russ. what we're doing. That's pretty smart. That's what so, we're doing. Well, cool. So um, Savage Studios sounds pretty uh, exciting. You guys sound pretty ahead of the curve. So. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to reach you? And we'll drop a link, guys. You know that. But The production website is savagestudios.org, and the locations website is savagestudiosatl.com. I'm excited to see what you guys come up with. Oh, yeah. yeah. Me too, buddy. Me <laughs> well, too. Well, Russ, I really appreciate you being on the show. And uh, viewers, if you want to get in touch with Russ, you know how to do it. Just click on the link at the bottom of the video. And Russ, thank you so much for being here, brother. I appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure, Nate. My pleasure. Thank you.